So a lot of times we talk about the price of GPUs, the performance, but what does it actually mean? Let's say if I take a GPU like the 4060 Ti, the $500 one, by the way, the 16 gigabyte version, if you're gonna pay that much of a premium, everybody agrees that price is not really very fair. That should have been $399 and that should have been it. That should have been the 4060 Ti. But if you pay that premium, and let's say you have a 1440p monitor, something you would be expected to have probably around that level of a $500 GPU. What's your actual experience like? Forget about benchmarks and numbers. If you sit down in front of a nice monitor, what type of gaming performance are you to expect? So I'm gonna throw this guy a 4060 Ti. This is the Asus Pro Art model, the 16 gigabyte version. And let's play some of the newer games and see if it's a good experience. If you have to like change the settings or what exactly you have to do. Now, we're going to start off at 1440p. This is going to be an Intel 13900KS, so we're not really going to be bottlenecked by the CPU. So the first game is going to be Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, I've played through this entire game on various systems. It's a great game. Graphics look really good. The lighting, ray tracing. So let's put it at 1440p and let's just set the preset to max graphics. Generally, you may say on this type of GPU, you may want to do high or maybe a little bit less for one of the presets, but let's see if it's going to be able to handle max graphics. So as you can see, max graphics on the 1440p and it handles it really, really well. This is without any type of upscaling, no DLSS, no FSR. You're getting a pretty solid, you know, 60 to 70 FPS. So typically it looks really, really good. And you can see from the frame time, it's actually very even as well. You're not getting all these spikes and all these judders. It's an extremely playable experience. At least if you bought a $500 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, you could sit down at 1440p, preset max, and play this game pretty much with all the eye candy. And this type of game, it's a little bit slower. You don't necessarily need like 120 FPS, for example. Sure, it may look a little better with a higher FPS, but for this game, 70 or so is more than enough to really get the ball rolling. Now, let's take a look at another new release. This is gonna be Armored Core. This game isn't particularly demanding, but let's see if we fire up the 4060 Ti, let's see what it does. Once again, 14. 1440p, that's going to be our resolution of choice, sort of at right at the baseline. And then we're going to put everything pretty much maximum. And this game does have ray tracing, so we're also going to put that on maximum. So as we play here, this game actually has a frame rate limiter of up to 120 FPS, which is okay in this case. Even though this monitor can do 240, this GPU currently, as you can see the average, it's going to hover somewhere around 100 FPS. Very small smooth gaming experience. Of course, once in a while, the frame time, uh, you're gonna get a spike here or there, especially when you enter a new scene. But overall, very smooth gaming experience. This game doesn't use up nearly as much VRAM as something like Resident Evil 4, where the VRAM, you can see, definitely makes a difference in games like that. In most games, it seems like at 1440p with these type of settings, you're definitely blowing right past the eight gigabyte limit. So, brand new game, Armored Core, perfectly fine. You buy this $500 GPU, you can max out the graphics and it's gonna look and perform really, really well. Let's look at Immortals of Avium. This is a, a new game as well. This game does have DLSS um, that you can use, but first we're gonna try it without it. Let's see what type of performance that we're getting. Once again, I'm gonna take off the upscaling and then I'm gonna pretty much put the graphics basically as high as you would reasonably do it. Ultra, and of course, not everybody has to go to Ultra, diminishing returns, of course, but here we wanna test out if it's even possible. So around the Ultra level, as you can see that we, we play here, I mean, it's, it's using VRAM, but it's nothing crazy. The performance is a little bit under 60 frames per second. We're really more like in the 50 to 60 FPS range, which isn't terrible. This is like, it's not the most demanding game, but it is a fairly demanding game. So 
It still looks a little weird though, under 60 FPS. It just doesn't really feel smooth. And almost any GPU that you play without the upscaling on this game, it looks a little weird. Um, I don't know if they quite got the optimization down yet, but you can play it without any upscaling and you certainly will get pretty close to 50, 60 FPS. But this is the type of game where you either wanna turn down the settings a little bit, or I think it's gonna make more sense to actually use DLSS. Kinda of heard that possibly the developer Developers kind of had upscaling in mind when they designed this game, which of course isn't necessarily the, the crutch that you want to go towards, but fortunately that's how you know the gaming development market is now. And instead of optimizing games perfectly, they may kind of go towards the upscalers as a little bit of like a fallback. Now, if you do DLSS, even on quality, definitely the performance improves significantly. The game looks a lot smoother, plays a lot better. The VRAM is no issue on the 16 gigabyte by GPU, even though it does have a more limited memory bandwidth, that's different than the, you know, the VRAM amount. And this game, at least not at 1440p, it's not really showing itself to be that big of an issue. So even with DLSS, I would prefer to turn on DLSS on quality rather than lower the settings on this particular game. On some games, yes, I agree. You should just lower a few settings, maybe ray tracing if that's there, especially, and then you can avoid using upscalers. But this game, I think it kind of looks better when you leave everything on ultra and then you just use dlss like on quality or something like that and the performance is very decent it's very very smooth no issues at all it looks great so this game you could also put on this gpu it wouldn't, you wouldn't really have any issues now what about Ratchet and Clank. That's a game that I like to play. It's a lot of fun. And this game just eats up VRAM. You'll see in the VRAM allocation, it blows way past eight gigabytes of VRAM. You can be anywhere from like 12 to 13, really, um, on 1440p, showing you that the eight gigabyte 4060 Ti cannot perform anywhere close to this. Now, without any type of upscaling with the graphics on very high and ray tracing on very high, the game, not that it's like absolutely terrible, but it's not really all that playable. It's a little bit stuttery. You can see frame time problems. The FPS certainly is just not that high with these really high graphics. Now, this is a game where you can do two things. You can either turn on DLSS with frame generation and you're gonna get significantly better performance or if you want to avoid any upscaler like DLSS, you can turn down some of the settings. You can just go from very high, maybe turn it down to high, and maybe even ray tracing. You can lower it that even more, and you can kind of gauge on the screen how that difference is going to play out. But you can do either of those two things. I do like using DLSS in some cases, and some games like this, where it's more of like a fun first-person game. And I think putting it on quality with frame generation, you get a really good bump in frames per second. The game just looks better and smoother. Like, you can immediately tell the difference. So this is the game you can go to either way. Um, I wouldn't play it natively on the 4060 Ti. It's a very demanding game. You're probably going to need at least like maybe a 4070 Ti or 4080 to play it natively without any type of upscalers and be like way over 60 FPS. I think I tested the 4080 on this game at like around 80 something FPS without an upscaler. So you can kind of do the math from there. 4070 at least, you get close to that you know, sort of 60 frames per second. But here, you're definitely gonna wanna either turn the settings down or do an upscaler. But in either case, you can still have a really good experience. Even with DLSS 3, you're gonna have a very smooth and playable experience on the 4060 Ti. Partly, I think, thanks to the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, especially in this game. If you do the eight gigabyte version, which I have tested as well and I showed in the previous video, it gets much lower frame rates because it's hitting that VRAM buffer. Textures can't load nearly as nicely as on a 16 gigabyte GPU, you definitely get a lot of different issues. So now, finally, let's try Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, ray tracing ultra you can see it does really struggle to around like 20 30 fps and in this game you have to be careful when you turn uh, dlss on or off because sometimes it'll show it as off but it's not going to show up in game that's something i had to kind of make sure it was kind of adjusted but as you can see the performance isn't really all that great
great with DLSS off. You're getting like 20, 30 FPS, under 30. So not a very playable experience. To be fair, almost any GPU struggles with Cyberpunk with ray tracing on Ultra. So here you either turn off ray tracing and then you can go to like, you know, maybe just high or something like that um, without any type of ray tracing and you're going to get much better performance. Or if you want to leave ray tracing on, take advantage of DLSS 3 with frame generation in this game and the difference then you get up to like 70 80 fps feels really really smooth latency doesn't really seem to be that big of an issue in this particular game and that's basically almost two to three times the frame rate and the game does just feel better with dlss this specific game so as you can see all of these games are, you know, fairly demanding, fairly new games, and they're very playable on the 4060 Ti 16GB. But I don't really think that was ever the biggest argument against the 4060 Ti 16GB. Nobody said it was a terrible GPU. The problem really comes down to the price. For the price, it's a terrible GPU. $499, and even this version here was $529 because it's an AIB Asus model, a little bit different. 499 MSRP, way too high. If this was a $399 GPU, I would say that's a pretty good GPU. That's almost like a slam dunk. Because look, for 400 bucks, look at all these new AAA games and these very demanding games you're able to play, especially with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, at 1440p with ray tracing. That's certainly not bad. But at this price, anything that AMD throws out there, maybe a 7800 XT that's going to be coming up for like 499 and then the 449 7700 XT, those GPUs, the, especially the 16 gigabyte one, that's going to be basically the same price as this. AMD already showed it being competitive with a 4070. So that may give this GPU a run for its money. And we're going to have to see if the ray tracing performance is you know, much inferior, how FSR 3 is going to play out compared to DLSS 3. As you can see, DLSS 3, we had to use it on some of these games to make sure that it really performed nicely. Not all of them, but some of them got a big boost like Cyberpunk 2077. But overall, if you buy a $500 GPU, I mean, I don't even know why this should be surprising. You could have a pretty good experience. It's too much. It should have been like 400 bucks, 350, $400. But at least it can play some of these newer games on a 1440p monitor. So at least, man, eh, not the worst thing in the world. The 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte can't do the same things that this one can when it comes to VRAM limitations at 1440p. So that one is certainly a bad buy. I'm not saying you spend an extra 100 and get this. But at least keep an eye on what the 7800 XT from AMD is going to do. Maybe if that 4070 gets lower in price, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 8 any day of the week, even though 16 certainly is nice. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.